hope having an awesome day. I did not plan this live. I just am coming on here because I've had a few conversations and I've heard um, a few people talking about banning food groups, right? And I'm here, or like just like cutting food groups out completely. And so I'm here to talk a little bit about why this is not a good idea, of course, with a few exceptions, because there's always a few exceptions for certain people. Um, and I'll go into that here in a little bit. But this is something that I see a lot in the health and nutrition space, especially if people are on the weight loss journey. Comment below if you are here, for, or if you're trying to lose weight or you're here for weight loss support in the health and weight loss for foodies group. Welcome to the group. If you haven't seen me talk before, I am Kristen. I am the owner and founder of Create My Weight. We are a health and weight loss coaching company and we are here to teach people food freedom and how to enjoy all the foods they love in a way that supports their goals so of course i am someone that does not advocate giving up entire food groups however i also don't advocate giving up entire food groups for health purposes okay and also for your longevity in being successful on your health and weight loss journey so i want to talk a little bit about this because every in the when i talk about food groups I'm actually talking today specifically about the main macronutrients, okay? So we have protein, we have fat, we have carbs, and the fourth macronutrient actually, which people don't always understand is a macronutrient, is alcohol. Now, I'm not here to tell you everyone should be drinking alcohol, that it's a health food. It's not, of course. Alcohol is a toxin. Um, it's actually the first thing your body excretes um, when you consume alcohol. So if you're drinking and eating, your body is always going to burn the alcohol first because your body looks at it like a toxin and it, it wants to burn and get rid of it, meaning your body stores everything you're consuming, first and foremost. Um, but um, so I'm going to be talking mainly about fats, carbs, and protein. And so oftentimes people don't cut protein completely because you know they know they need protein especially if you're trying to build lean muscle mass it's really important for your skeletal muscle mass actually in your longevity so I rarely meet people who are trying to cut protein completely in fact most people are trying to increase their protein intake because they know it's important and a lot of people are not getting enough protein and oftentimes they get the question of how much protein should I be consuming and there's lots of different numbers out there based on what you Google search and what you find honestly um, but according to the majority of um, all the health space, um, we say it's 0.6 to 0.8 per pound of body weight. Okay, and that is if you are strength training, if you are an athlete or you work out regularly, you know, that is a number you should be aiming for because that will help with your recovery. Because remember, when you are strength training, you are breaking down muscle mass. So to re rebuild that muscle mass and make that muscle bigger and stronger, you want to eat protein. But eating carbohydrates is just as important. So that's why you don't want to cut carbs. And I'll talk about that soon. Um, now for health and longevity. So let's say you're not strength training regularly or you're just looking to keep the muscle mass you have or just to be healthy in general, the minimum protein requirement is 0.34 to 0.37 per pound of body weight, okay? So it's a much lower range. So actually in CMW, we typically have a low range for protein and the upper range of protein, right? So, you know, I would say anywhere from 0.35 to 0.7, you need to be at least in that range, but for all my weight trainers, which most of my clients are strength training, um, you should be on a higher range, right? So you know, definitely getting protein in, so no one's banning protein. Um, but I wanna talk a little bit about carbohydrates because I feel like a lot of people, especially when they first joined CMW, they're nervous to cut carbohydrates, I'm sorry, to eat carbohydrates because a lot of people, maybe you watching this video right now, have cut carbs in the past. Maybe you've tried keto, you've tried um, any diet that cuts carbs, South Beach, Atkins, you name it. Um, there's so many out there these days. And so we are afraid of eating carbs, even like good quality carbs, um, like complex carbohydrates. Maybe you're nervous of beans or lentils or potatoes or um, I don't even know, chickpeas, for example, lots of different carbohydrates out there. But I want to explain something to you, especially if you are active, like you are strength training, maybe you're a runner, you're, you play tennis, or you're just a very active person. You have a job where you're walking around all day long, you're getting at least 10,000 steps a day. Um, you know, your body is going to crave carbohydrates, right? So carbohydrates are the body's number one preferred fuel source, right? So naturally your body, of course, without alcohol, your body's always going to burn the carbs first. Okay, so let's say, for example, you eat a burger, all right? So you're having a burger, let's say it's beef burger, it doesn't really matter what the what it's inside, but let's say it's like a beef burger, there's cheese, there's lettuce, tomato, and then you have the bun, your body's gonna burn the bun first, 
right? And it's going to store the protein and the fat after. That's why if you do go keto, for example, and you don't eat the the bun, your body is going to burn the fat. And, you know, in the keto world, we say that fat is a cleaner fuel source, where, the, where there is a lot of truth to that, right? So your body is going to burn the fat first, and then it's going to store the protein, which is good, right? Because we need that protein um, for repairing muscle. So, and then we're, we're cutting the carbohydrates, calories there, and then your body's a more efficient fuel source. So that's one of the benefits of being keto. Yes, you know, when you are eating more of a fat fuel source, your body tends to burn that more cleanly. But the average person, guys, we do move um, and we do want those carbohydrates. And so I oftentimes tell clients that it's not a good idea to cut carbs completely because ultimately your body is going to want those carbohydrates and you are an active person, right? We always incorporate movement into our routine in CMW. So that's why I'm not a fan. And maybe you can cut carbs for a few weeks, maybe a few months. You know, you might lose a lot of weight, but ultimately those carbs will come back into your life in one form or another. And then typically you're going to see the weight come back. You're going to be craving carbs more once you eat those carbs again. So instead of cutting them out completely and then trying down the road to reintroduce them, it's better to learn how to control them slowly right and learning how to eat more complex carbohydrates and carbs that are not going to make you crave them all the time and this is actually one of the biggest reasons why i don't recommend wheat bread right so not only is it because of the gluten which is a gut disruptor and also because you know wheat in general is very addictive right and so when we eat wheat, even if it's sprouted grain or sprouted wheat, for example, like Ezekiel bread, um, Dave's killer bread, I actually don't think Dave's killer bread is sprouted grain. I think it's just regular wheat bread. I could be wrong, so comment if I'm wrong. Um, but those breads and those, those are more addictive foods and we're gonna crave them more often. So that's why I typically recommend that clients do not consume those, right? Um, also too, there's some really great literature out there. Um, Grain Brain is a great one that talks about the effects of wheat on the brain and um, Dr. Davis actually talks about how wheat is almost like an opioid, right? And that we, we crave it, right? It's kind of a, it's addictive. So anyway, that's kind of why I limit that. So with this being said, if you are going to eat carbohydrates, I always recommend eating carbohydrates that give you the most bang for your buck, right? So for example, eating lentils or beans. Um, I love potatoes, for example. Um, like I always say my favorite carbs are like potatoes, I do love bread, not gonna lie. Um, I had some awesome sourdough bread last night at this restaurant here in um, West Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, Elizabeth, some of you know it. And so I do eat that once in a while, right? But no, bread is not something that I'm eating on a daily basis, even though I'm Italian. Uh, I do look at that as a treat more or less. But um, more bang for your buck, for example, yes, like, uh, chickpea pasta, lentil pasta, those are going to be much healthier, more fibrous, there's a little bit more protein in them, as opposed to wheat pasta or rice pasta. Rice pasta and rice in general has little to no, I actually want to say no, nutritional value. Okay, that's why rice is not one of the better carbohydrates to be consuming. It has just as many calories as lentils or beans or chickpeas um, or other carbs that have fiber, protein, actually both. Um, so that's why I always say have carbs that give you the most bang for your buck. And that's something we do teach in CMW. Now let's talk about fats. So I have worked with people before that truly love carbohydrates, right? And so in their mind, especially if you're like a bodybuilder or you've been um, a fitness competitor, for example, and you're doing a more maybe higher carb, um, higher protein diet, you're looking to build muscle mass. And we know that building muscle mass needs carbohydrates right because carbohydrates fuel those muscle bellies and make them bigger so actually if you are a bikini competitor or you're a fitness competitor for example like the day of the competition or a couple of days before you're carbo loading right you're leaning out leaning out up until a day or two before and then you're loading up on carbs okay so if you've been a competitor you know what i'm talking about you're eating brownies and all the sugar behind the stage because you're filling up those those muscle bellies right so that your muscles pop when you're on stage, right? So you're eight to 10% body fat if you're a female, lower if you're a male, um, but you're filling up those muscles with carbs. So, and then you're cutting fat pretty much, right? So that diet, although it is helpful for building muscle, it is not good for hormone balance, it's not good for your brain, and it's not good for longevity, okay? And so that's why it's important, you guys, to have a well-rounded, balanced, diet the best diets my friends have the most variety and include all the food groups okay so in cmw for example we do not ban or cut food groups 
The only exception to this might be if you have an allergy, okay? Um, so for example, like, and I don't even wanna say gluten, gluten's not a food group, okay? Um, but it's part of, I guess, it's, it's found in a lot of carbohydrates, right? So no, we do not ban food groups. Um, Another you know thing we can consider, for example, is you might have some, you might know someone who's like grain free, for example. So actually, last night I was seeing one of our CMW alumni, Jen. She was speaking at, on this panel um, at a small business meeting, and I was catching up with her. She's doing great. She's had a baby. I love seeing her. She was super successful in our program, and she was always gluten free. She really kept dairy to a minimum um, while she was in CMW because that was her choice. But one thing she's also done that's been really helpful for her is being grain free, and she said that she's helped a lot lot with her body and that worked for her now granted you do not have to do that that's something that worked for Jen and in CMW we always say do what works for you you don't have to do what the masses do um, but I wouldn't consider grain an entire food group that's just like a little sub um, group <laughs> I would call it okay so when I say food groups I'm really talking about the main macronutrients okay now if you want to ban alcohol that's the fourth macronutrient by all means do it nobody needs alcohol I know sometimes there are studies that red wine is so good for you drink red wine every day having a beer after a run is like super helpful again like this is just you know this of course is like mainstream um, yes there are health benefits to red wine like resveratrol and there's antioxidants in red wine but you guys know this there's resveratrol in berries and there's antioxidants in lots of other foods you can consume green tea for example you know so again we don't have to have alcohol that's just something we enjoy and guys I love wine it is Wednesday so in my world it's wine Wednesday so I'm not here to you know bad mouth wine or anything and a lot of my clients if I did they they wouldn't like me right because they're in the wine space um, I have, I've had clients that work in the beer space as well, um, and I enjoy a nice IPA after a hike. Uh, so again, I'm not here to say don't drink, but of course, if you're looking to be a healthier person, weight loss is a goal for you, minimizing your alcohol is always going to be a good idea, not just because of the caloric density of alcohol, but also the alcohol's effect on your hormones. And I was talking actually earlier today with a client about this, that the biggest thing with alcohol is how it affects your testosterone and your estrogen. Right, so when you drink alcohol, you are increasing your estrogen levels, which is your fat storing hormone, and you are lowering your testosterone, which is, which is your muscle producing hormone, right? So sometimes if we go work out and then we drink a bunch, you know, we elevate the testosterone and we work out, but then we lower it and we drink. Right, and some people don't care because they're fit and they're like, okay, cool. Um, but again, like if, if building muscle is a major priority for you, you know, keeping your alcohol intake to a minimum would be ideal, right? But again, I'm about food freedom. So it's real, totally up to you. But our job in CMW is to give you clarity and show you how to drink in a way that supports your goals. How often can you drink? What should you drink? Um, how often with what food? How do you balance that into your life? Same thing with carbohydrates. Well, I love carbohydrates. Which one should I be eating? Which ones are best for me? How often should I have them? When should I have them? How do I kind of cycle them around my workouts? Same thing with fats. You know, what kinds of fats? How often? All the all of these questions you have are things we answer for you in CMW. Because as I said before, the best diets have the most variety. And oftentimes as well, people plateau on the weight loss journey when they're eating the same things over and over again. So comment below if you're somebody who eats the same things over and over again, and you tend to get bored or you plateau and you're like, what the hell do I do? I'm following this meal plan, I'm counting my calories, this worked for me a year ago or it worked three months ago and now it's not working. What gives? Comment if that's you. And typically what I find is that you probably have been doing it for too long and your body needs to change. So if you're looking for a change, you're looking for some answers, you're looking for some clarity, and more importantly, you're looking for some consistent results without having to spin your wheels and read a million blogs or books and figure it out because who has time for that? All right, I know you have way more important things to think about this time of year than what new diet to try because you've done them all. And people that come to CMW, I'll be honest, they've done a lot of different things. And they come to us because they're ready for their solution. I always say in CMW, we love cookies, 
but nothing we do is cookie cutter. Everyone we work with is different. Yesterday we onboarded two amazing new clients. They want to be whole food plant-based. And so they met with our um, vegan chef Pip who onboarded them and got them, you know, situated. But then we have clients that love meat and they love, you know, they, and they love all kinds of foods. So everyone in CMW eats differently. They have different goals, different food values, different preferences. And so our job is to make them all happy and get them the results they want. So if you're looking for that support, you want that clarity, you want to be consistent and you want to get started soon. You don't want to wait till after the holidays and you know, all the carbs are going to be around you and the sweets. And yeah, guys, like definitely don't want to ban food groups this time of year, <laughs> because again, when you tell yourself you're not going to eat any of these foods, guess what your brain's going to tell you? I want, I want, I want, right? You're going to create those foods. And then when you do eat them, we're going to overdo it. Okay. So if you're looking for a plan, a strategy, a system to get you through the holidays, get you into the new year and start off 2023 on a strong foot, CMW is here for you. Okay. So if you'd like to learn more, you can schedule a call with me. I'll drop my link below, createmyweight.com forward slash apply. I'd love to learn more about you. I'd love to know like what you've tried, what has worked for you, what hasn't worked for you, what goals you have for yourself now. And we'll talk about the best way to get you there whether it's with CMW or with something else. Okay, we're very transparent and we'll guide you in the right direction. All right, so I'll drop my link here again, but it's createmyweight.com forward slash apply. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this talk today, do not go and ban entire food groups, okay? Not the long-term solution. It might work for two weeks and then you're back to square one. So if you wanna start off the right way and never have to backtrack again, schedule a call with us and we'll help you, all right? Make it a great Wednesday. I'll pop in here another time. All right, bye.